Hallo und willkommen zu neuen Video. Today I'm going to show you how to unlock any version of 5 Dino Bison CPUs. Or if it, is it even work with compared to MD's Auto Overclock feature, PBO, also called MD Position Overdrive. The hardware we're going to use today is the Ryzen 9 5900X and the X5 70 Arnold Pro Gigabyte. So in the video today, I will show you how to make all core overclock. I will make a video later about CCX overclock. That means if you have a CPU like mine, the Ryzen 9 5900X, it has actually two dies with six core each. So you guys actually overclock per die. I know the first die on the CPU is actually a lot better than the second one. So there you can hit like 4.7 GHz on all six cores. And the rest of the six cores on the die 2, they can run like 4.6. So that's actually a bit, uh, a good big jump in performance. So, but that is a video for another time. Now let's get to the overclocking. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the BIOS. And now when we're into the BIOS, we need to go into the advanced mode. Again, this motherboard is a Gigabyte X570 Arrows Pro. And on all Gigabyte boards, the advanced mode will be if you click on the F2 or on the advanced mode in the menu at the right side. Now you see all the things we can tweak and uh, do whatever we want. The first thing we're going to do is actually set up our RAM frequency correct. So we're going to enable the XMP or in some cases it will be called DOCP on AMD. So now you can see the RAM is setting to DDR4. 3600 CL16, that is the RAM kit I'm using. If you are using RAM kits of 3800 or even 4000, it might not work on all CPUs. On 3rd gen Ryzen, this is the sweet spot for the CPUs. On 5th gen, you can run up to like 3800 on 20% of the CPUs, no problem. But 4000, that will require a lot more tweaking and a lot more voltage. Okay, to the overclocking. If you're running a 3rd gen Ryzen, I would recommend you to start with a 4.3 GHz overclock. You will probably see around 4.3 and up to 4.5 if your CPU is really, really good. Mostly 4.3, 4.4. Because it's just sweet spot. And then I will have to start with 1.32 volts, and you can go up to like 1.35. That is the max for 13. And if you're running 510 uh, Ryzen, like I'm doing now with the Ryzen 9 5900X, I will say to start with 46, so a 4.6 gigahertz overclock, and you should start, I will say. You probably start with around the same voltage, um, 1.33 or 1.35, but I would not recommend it to go over like uh, 1.38 voltage. I know this will work on 1.35 for this CPU. Your CPU may vary. Every CPU is not the same. So I'm going to do like this: a 4.6 gigahertz on 1.35 volts. And again, you go up to 1.38 on 5 gen if you're really good cooling. Now I'm just gonna press F10 and save and exit. Let's see it in the Windows. Okay, and now we put it into Windows. Now I will open three programs: hardware info and CPU set to validate the speed and voltage. Then I'm gonna use Cinebench R20 to actually see if the overclock is uh, stable. And I will link all the programs down below. Okay, as you see here, we're now running a 4.6 GHz on every call and around 1.344 volts. Because of the load line calibration, the voltage will drop under load. So that may vary from board to board because they are all set up different from the, from the factory. So Gigabyte may use a a more aggressive uh, load line calibration, ASUS will probably do the opposite. 
If you're dropping uh, way too much voltage, you could just crank up the voltage a little bit more. But that's why I see if the overclock is in the stable. Okay, Philippines R20 is running, and we're actually running only 1.2 for 8 uh, volts around that. And we are seeing attempts of 65, 71, 67. That is pretty impressive. So we're getting around 8,800. That's really good for a stable overclock of 4.6 gigahertz. If you want to see if this is 100% stable, I won't recommend you to use Prime 95 because that is a unreal workload. You can just go up into the preference in Telephones and set it to run for like 10,000 seconds and just let it run. If it passes like three or four hour, three or four hours in Telephones, I would call it stable because in gaming you won't even see 50% of this workload anyway. But I did this test with the PBO and stock settings, so let's compare the overclock and see how good they are. So, we got the CPU to run at 4.6 GHz on call, but was it worth it? Well, let's now take a look at the stock and PBO settings versus the 4.6 GHz on call instead of its R20. Let me first take a look at the multiple score. The 4.6 GHz all call is 8.9% faster than stock settings and 6% faster than PBO. Meanwhile, the PBO is 2.8% faster than stock settings. If we now look at the same call speed, the 4.6 GHz all call is actually 4% slower than both stock and PBO. So, is it worth it? And can the gap close in more? even more in the second call speed with 66 overclocking. Well, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss, miss that video and see you in the next one.